We're celebrating a very special 23rd anniversary with Ann Watson today. Uh, now, Ann's face was immediately familiar to me because she has been one of our Crossroads prayer partners. How many years, Ann, were you answering? I, I believe phones? it was seven years. Seven years. And the date we are celebrating goes back to 1987, right, February correct. 3rd, a devastating diagnosis of leukemia. Your life had not been easy prior to that day. Give <laughs> no, us a little no, I, of what I say, was happening. I say my life had been um, a, a, a train wreck um, because of early decisions that I made. I, I had really rebelled. My parents became Christians when I was young. But I, I, so I was introduced to Jesus. We, we, we all were as a family. Um, but um, I chose to go my own way. <clears throat> I, I, I saw being a Christian as being the most boring thing you could ever do. Got to cramp I could, your style. I couldn't do anything <laughs> I wanted to, really wanted to do with my life if I became a Christian. So I rebelled against God and consequently rebelled against my parents. And, and um, uh, however, my mom uh, passed away with cancer at 53. My, mm. my dad was having a, a very difficult time getting back, just going to church, doing normal things. So I thought, oh, I'm strong, you know, I can take this, you know. So I said, um, Dad, you need to get going back to church. I'll go with you. And uh, so we went. <laughs> the church was jam-packed. It was just a little country church, you know, where we had gone when we were kids. And, and uh, the, the only place is that was right on the front seat. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it, you know, the, the gospel message just came alive to me that day. And there had just been pillars in my life when I would think about God, you know. And, and um, I would think, because of all of these things in my life, I can never become a Christian. God would never want me. Hmm. And and uh, and that day, it was just like everything rolled away. And, and when he just said, you know, do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for you? Do you believe that, you know, he went up to heaven and you can be with him there? And just, you know, all of those things in, in the gospel story. And I, I just, I was sitting there and I said, why I believe all of those things? And before I knew it, I, I mean, I was just outside of myself. I just, I was on my feet and I went forward and knelt at an altar because that's what we did in that church. And, and it was just, it was just like, um, it was, it was a newness, instant newness of life. You were in your mid twenties and, yes. and you were changed. Yeah. Completely changed. Transformed. Yes. Yeah. My husband at that time, as a matter of fact, I didn't tell him for three days, but, um, when I did tell him, he said, I knew when you walked through the door that day. Hmm. Now, I wish we could say it was a bed of roses following that, uh, but no. your marriage was... That, that marriage ended. Not good. No. And uh, you were a single mom. When you got this diagnosis, uh, you'd, you'd been sick for about a year prior yeah. to learning yeah. what was wrong. Taken many, many prescriptions and nothing helped. And I would just go back and say, you know, I need something else. Um, but, you know, I'm just not feeling well. I have no strength. I, I couldn't, some days it couldn't work more than a couple of hours a day. And what were you working at at that time, Anne? Um, actually, I was um, in financial planning, a life insurance broker, mm -hmm. and, and uh, worked very hard. I mean, I was a workaholic. <laughs> ah. And uh, so I was used to working, you know, 15 or 18 hours a day if it meant seeing all of my clients and looking after the people that I needed to look after. And, and uh, I loved my work and I, I was good at it and I was, I was a top producer. I was um, a member of the Million Dollar Roundtable Conference, which is, wow. or, uh, I shouldn't say conference, but the annual meeting. Um, that's the top 3% of people in, in that industry. And, um, and all of a sudden I just couldn't keep, I just, I couldn't keep it up anymore. I would go to work and I would go out and say to my secretary, I, I just have to go home. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I, I just, uh, I just have to go home. And, what an interruption uh, in your life. Oh yeah. And what was the Big prognosis time. with this diagnosis? 
Well, I hadn't been diagnosed at that time. When, when, actually, my sister went to my doctor and said, you've got to take Anne seriously. You know, I went in with all makeup on because, you know, I was working and so on and looked pretty good. And, and he said, you always look fine to me. Oh, <laughs> and so my sister went in and said, you've got to take Anne seriously. And then one day he called me at my office and asked me if I was in a position to leave my office immediately and come directly to his office. So I said, if you put it that way, yes, I'll, I'll come. So I dropped everything. I just, I just, you know, grabbed my purse and got in the car. And, and all the way I was thinking, you know, what could this possibly be, you know? I mean, this must be serious if he wants me to come directly to his office. So when I got there, just as I arrived and, and I parked, I parked illegally right in front of his door because I didn't think I could walk up the steps. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, just as I, I arrived, I said to myself, leukemia. And, and uh, as, I, as I walked into his office, I thought, well, I'll just be going to see my mother early. Heaven. Yeah. You were thinking you would be going home yeah. to heaven. Yeah, yeah. Because, I, I mean, I had been feeling like um, whatever is wrong with me, whatever is going on, I'm not going to last very long. That's the way I was feeling. And, uh, and then he sent me directly from there to emergency where another doctor was waiting. And, and they did, uh, oh, two or three more sets of blood tests. And about 10 o'clock that night, I found out that uh, I, I did, in fact, have leukemia. My white count was about 10 times higher than it should be. Now that inner voice had prepared you somewhat. Yes. But what was it like hearing those words? Uh, quite devastating. My life just rolled by in front of me. You know, that, um, of course, you know, my children and, and uh, you know, wanting to just, you know, you know, you just want to take them and grasp them and, and, and just hold them tight, you know. Um, and, uh, and you'd think of, you know, people in places and, and, and uh, you know, you went down memory lane, but it was it, it was like the world just rolled around your and whole you, life. You're, yeah, uh -huh. just in in 90 seconds, <laughs> you know, your life rolled by in front of you. It's wonderful to, to read your story and see how quickly the Lord, the comforter oh, came yes. alongside and, and, and in oh, some yeah. cases with a bit of an army boot. Uh, you were in your bedroom and something fell out of a drawer. Do you remember? <laughs> yeah, that I went track? into a night table. I, I went into a night table. I don't know what I was looking for now, but, but this leaflet fell out at my feet. Now, uh, I had been handed that leaflet 11 years earlier on a vacation. I, was, I had been in the Bahamas and um, I walked past this little church and this lady handed me a leaflet and I thanked her for it and put it in my purse. Never read it, but I took it out that day and it was entitled Stand Up and Take It. Stand Up and Take It. Yes, Ooh. Stand Up and Take It. But you know, I knew it was from the Lord and I knew, you know, I'm not supposed to be sitting around crying about this. I'm not supposed to be, you know, uh, just... Uh, mourning my death already because I'm still alive and and um, I've always been a very forward-thinking person and indeed you wrote in your diary if I only had six months to live yeah what would I do with my life so you were you were thinking yeah uh, proactively what yeah. am I gonna do with myself here yeah yeah and and so you know uh, of course my relationship with God came first mm. and I determined you know, that day that I wanted his, him to be glorified in my life, whether it was in life and death. Mm. I, 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 I wanted the Lord to be glorified. It's an interesting fact that really you should be 10 years, uh, you are 10 years older than those they would normally discuss a bone marrow transplant with. Oh, yes. Uh, you were outside the zone right. for what you would be rescued by. Yes, even the nurses protested at the idea of me having, of them doing a bone marrow transplant uh, for me. And it was your but, brother who came to the rescue yeah, first. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, the first time, yes. Well, my brother's come to my rescue three times and my sister once, but, wow. but um, yeah, on that very first day, 
and 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 making that um, decision, you know. But if I can go back for a minute and say how the Lord really came into my decision about having the first oh, transplant yeah. was that I, I visited my older son out west. He was in Saskatoon um, doing his master's at that time and uh, went to visit them and he was uh, saying, you know, if there's any possibility that they'll do it, mom, you know, do it, go for it, you know, do anything. And uh, so I said to him, Daryl, if I'm to have a bone marrow transplant, God will have to show me in black and white. Mm 